And I concluded that perhaps the best way I could do it was to write this on the blackboard or to put it on the screen. The Bible, which is the Word of God, cannot err. And then I asked the students at Princeton Seminary, how many of you agree with this? Of course, not too many would agree with that statement. Then I asked them, how many of you would agree with the statement if I covered up the first line and it just read, the Word of God cannot err? Well, that's a little more difficult to disagree with, isn't it? Because surely the Word of God, the fountain of all truth, cannot err. And yet, if the Bible is the Word of God, then the statement, the Bible, which is the Word of God, cannot err, is just as true as the statement, the Word of God cannot err. But perchance there might be some venturous theological soul who would deny that the Word of God cannot err. I covered up the next line and left only the words, God cannot err. How many of you would disagree with this? I said, well, hardly a soul would venture to stand before Almighty God, the fountainhead of all truth, and say, I am telling you the truth, God lies. The Apostle Paul put it bluntly in Romans 3, let God be true and every man a liar, not man true and God a liar. And yet, by an invincible logic, if God cannot err, and surely he cannot err because Hebrews 6.18 says it's impossible for God to lie. Titus 1.2, the God who cannot lie. John 17.17, 17, thy word is truth. The Lord is not a man that he should lie, we're told in Numbers. It's impossible for God to lie. If it's impossible for God to err, if God cannot err, then the word of God cannot err. And if the Bible is the Word of God, then the Bible, which is the Word of God, cannot err.